Hello folks, this is Jeff King again, and I want to thank you for being with us on our continuation of our study of the book of Revelation. And today we're going to embark upon Revelation, actually two chapters. Today we're going to look at 15 and 16. These are both kind of short chapters. Um, they're introducing us to the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. Chapter 15 is kind of the introduction. Chapter 16 actually starts that last half, uh, three and a half years. And it's also where um, these seven angels are going to pour out the seven vials of God's wrath. And so this is going to be a very uh, destructive uh, period of time in the lives of the people that live here on the earth, the earth dwellers, those that don't have the mark of the beast, or that do have the mark of the beast, excuse me. And those that don't have the mark of the beast will not go through these, uh, these um, plagues these, uh, that we're going to be looking at uh, as we study through these two chapters. And so um, we'll just bring everybody up to speed. You remember back um, in chapters 8 and 9 is where we have the trumpet judgments. And as we went, and what you're going to see in we, today when we go through the vile judgments, that they're a continuation, but a lot more extensive than uh, what you saw with the trumpets. The trumpets were just kind of like the introduction, the beginning stages of God's judgment uh, during this period of time. And, and of course, um, uh, chapters um, 10 through 14 uh, were all about the middle of the tribulation period and um, some things that was going on in heaven, around the throne and from the throne. And, um, and getting ready for this last uh, second half. And so chapters today, 15 and 16, deal um, with an introduction and then um, the pouring out of these seven vials. And so it's a lot of information um, and a, not a lot of verses. And so we'll go through that and then kind of end with kind of another introduction to uh, kind of where it's going to go from here. Uh, all the way up to chapter 22. So a lot's going to still be happening. The worst is yet to come uh, as far as those people that are dwelling on the earth without Jesus Christ with the seal of the beast, um, the 666 and uh, on their foreheads, and uh, they're going to have to pay the price uh, because of their rejection of Jesus Christ as their Savior. And so as we start, let's have a word of prayer, and uh, we'll get into the, this section of our study. Father, we thank you for another time that you've allowed us to have this opportunity. As I thought about the other day in putting these videos together, uh, there's still a lot of problems uh, related to the virus and not being able still to get back um, and may not ever in this life get back to where we were before um, the, the virus showed up, uh, the COVID virus. but. Uh, Lord, you're God, you're in control, and you know why all these things have happened, and you're uh, just simply just playing out the hand uh, that, you've dealt, that you've dealt us and that you've dealt the world, and as Christians, we just need to accept our responsibility to keep telling people about you, to trust you, and have confidence that you're doing what's best and your blessings are going to be in the midst of whatever turmoil and trouble that any of us have to face. And no matter how dark life around us gets, our faith is in you and we have confidence going forward because of our relationship with you. And so I pray as I go through this information today, if we have somebody listening or watching that's never trusted you as their Savior, we pray today could be the day of salvation in their life. They might understand that there's three things that they have to understand to go to heaven. They have to understand they're a sinner. We're all sinners. We have to understand what the penalty of that sin is. If you gave us what we deserve, we'd be in hell. And then all we, from there, we just need to understand how much you love us, the purpose of why Jesus came to this earth from heaven, why he lived 33 and a half years with a mirth, earthly ministry with no sin, never breaking one of your laws in the whole time that he was here, 100% man, 100% God, and then laid that perfect life down on the cross as a sacrifice, shed the blood that was in that body as a sacrifice for the sins of all of us. And anybody that's watching these videos, it's never trusted 
you, I pray that you'll speak to their heart and they might understand today their need for you as their Savior. And Lord, we'll give you all of the honor and all the glory for everything that's said and done. And we'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Revelation chapter 15. By way of some introduction, this section uh, begins the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. At this point, John saw the seven angels holding the seven vials of God's wrath, poised for action. The world system and all them who, are reje who have rejected the Lord Jesus are about to drink of the wine of God's wrath. That goes back to Revelation chapter 11 and verse number 14. Before the angels pour out their judgments, beginning in chapter 16, there's an interlude. You kind of see a pattern of these interludes in these times of, of God just, just kind of holding things back so that he might um, uh, send something else in, a message in that people need to hear another opportunity to repent and come to him uh, before this judgment falls upon them. And so before the angels poured out, we had this interlude, um, and then the faithful in heaven and those who had gotten victory over the beast and over the image, over his mark, and over um, the number of his name, uh, the name, the number of the beast, are here seen singing the song of Moses, reminding that God will always have his way in the end. And we're going to look at this song of Moses, and actually the context of that is it's a poem that Moses gave to the nation of Israel on the day of his death. You know, Moses, nobody knows where Moses was buried because God took him up in the mountain and God buried him in the mountain somewhere. And so nobody but God knows where, where Moses was buried. And yet that day, Moses, knowing what was getting ready to happen, gave the, this poem to the, to the nation of Israel. And the theme of this poem, which they were singing here in heaven, is the faithfulness of God. Listen, folks, God is faithful. God will do what he says he'll do. And he's always done what he said he'll do. And the greatest thing that he'll do that he says he'll do is he'll save you when you put your faith in him to take you to heaven. And so let's start reading in chapter 15 in verse number one. And it says, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. These vials are filled up, seven of them filled up with the wrath of God. That's kind of spooky. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, this is the song, Great and marvelous are the, thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And after I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened, and the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, that's the seven vials, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. And the temple, now notice this, and the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. 
the smoke of God was coming out of the temple and filled the temple to the point where nobody could enter in until these seven plagues were poured out. And so that's pretty interesting, pretty significant. And so that's all of chapter 15. That's just the introduction, eight verses of the second half of the tribulation period. And so now, as we look in Revelation chapter 16 and verse number one, he says this, and this is the introduction of the vials and the pouring out of the vials. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. I mean, that's pretty, pretty strong medicine. And this great voice out of the temple saying unto the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. How would you like to be on the earth as an earth dweller without Jesus Christ, having already experienced what happened in the first three and a half years and um, where, what, over a third or a fourth of mankind was killed in those judgments. And so now we see that we see the, 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 the furthering, we see more judgment coming that's worse than the ones that they've already experienced. The sad reality is, as we read through this, is every time one of these is poured out, it kind of ends that section or that vial, that judgment, that plague kind of ends with once again, they would not repent. They would not turn to God and curse God in the midst of God's judgment upon their lives. And so let's look at these seven vials. Uh, verse number two of Revelation chapter 16, and this is a vial, the judgment of the grievous sores. And each one of these goes back to um, when the nation of Israel came out of Egypt and the plagues that Pharaoh went through and the people in the land of Egypt went through um, because of their rejection of God and because of Pharaoh's reaction uh, to Moses um, making demands from God to free his people. And so we see here in this first vial is one, it's, it's a plague of grievous sores. Verse number two of Revelation 16. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshiped his image. The sore, grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshiped the image. This vile judgment reminds us of the sixth plague in Egypt. Only those who had submitted to the beast and who have rejected the warnings of the first angel will experience this judgment. Revelation 16 verses 10 through 11 suggests that these sores do not disappear. For by the time the fifth vial, people are still in pain from this first judgment. The interesting note is that even in the midst of pain, intense pain and suffering at the hand of God's judgment, people still will not repent. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, to, to think that people will go through these kinds of judgments when it's the obvious hand of God judging them and yet still refuse to repent. And you talk about pride. I mean, that's what kicked uh, Satan out of heaven was his pride. And if there's any one thing that prevents more people from going to heaven than anything else in this life is personal pride. The unwillingness to, to actually acknowledge God for who he is and to submit ourselves to his authority in his word. And when we refuse to submit ourselves to the authority of God, then um, the alternative is the wrath of God. And so we see that here in these grievous sores. And that was the first angel. Now we read verses three through six and we'll look at the second plague that's poured out. And this one is the water being turned to blood, water being turned to blood. And so it says, and the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea and it became as the blood of a dead man. 
And every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers, um, the rivers um, and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel um, of the waters saying, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. The second and third vials. Now here in this one plague, you've got two vials that make up this uh, second plague and the water being turned to blood. You remember when the trumpet judgments um, were, were poured out that a third part of the salt water was turned into blood and a third part of all of the fresh water and the streams feeding the rivers, all of that was turned bitter where men couldn't drink it and without getting sick and some even dying. And so here we see a continuation of that, but now all water, all salt water, all fresh water, all sources of fresh water turned into blood. That's pretty serious stuff. And so the second and third vials parallel the first plague in Egypt the second vial will center on the sea, and the third will turn the inland waters into blood. When the second trumpet judgment occurred, a third part of the sea became blood. But with this judgment, the entire system of the seas and the oceans will be blood, will be polluted. The third trumpet made a third part of the inland waters bitter as wormwood, but the vial, the third vial, will turn all of those bitter waters into blood. And so all water on the earth is going to be turned into blood when this vial is pulled out. You don't talk about, you don't think there's going to be judgment? And what's going to happen when people don't have water and can't get water? And it's so extremely uh, important. And yet the sad reality is in the midst of this, people still reject the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the first, uh, the first plague was the grievous sores in verse number two. The water turned to blood, uh, salt and fresh water, verses three through six. And then we get in verses eight through nine. And this would be the fourth angel that's pouring out his vial. And this is great heat from the sun. Now you remember in the, one of the tr trumpet judgments, um, a third of the sun was darkened. Well, now the entire sun is going to, going to be increased. The heat's going to be increased and um, to the point uh, where it will be just about unbearable for people on the earth. Great heat from the sun, verses 8 and 9. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blaspheme the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Try to imagine. I mean, right now here in Florida, while I'm um, recording uh, this lesson, it's about 95 plus degrees outside. And you don't have to walk outside but just a few minutes, and you've got sweat going everywhere. Try to imagine what it's going to be like on the earth when this heat is turned up from the sun and scorches people on the earth that don't know the Lord as their savior. Great heat from the sun. All earthly life depends on the light from the sun. In previous judgments, a part of the sun had been dimmed in Revelation 8, 12. But now the heat of the sun is increased. Remember to that water system is now, remember, remember that the water system is now useless. It is not hard to imagine how people will suffer, but still people will not submit to the Lord in all this suffering. You think about what people go through in this life with all the issues that we face and difficult times that, that people, all people have faced uh, in this, these last three or four months, and yet people are not turning to the Lord. And it's sad to see. And that's the fourth angel and the fourth and the uh, fourth vial that's poured out. And that's great heat from the sun. And now we want to look at uh, verses 10 and 11. In verses 10 and 11, uh, this is going to be the plague of darkness. 
this is um, where the vial is poured out and only the kingdom of the Antichrist is darkened. That's the only part of the world that's darkened on this fourth angel or fifth, uh, excuse me, fifth angel, this fifth vial. And it all applies to, to, to the Antichrist and his kingdom and that will, they will all be in darkness. And it's kind of interesting. Verse number 10 and 11, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness and they gnawed their tongues for pain. Now try to imagine that and probably the pain that they're still going from being scorched and, and the sores from the first one and, and now they're in total darkness, complete absolute darkness with all of this pain that's going on in their lives. And they blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And all they have to do is turn to the Lord and just accept him and say, we're sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, Lord, I, I just didn't understand and I love you and I want to thank you for dying for me and having mercy on me. But no, they just cuss him, just condemn him and, and, um, and blame, continue to blame him for all their problems. And these are problems that they brought upon themselves. And so again, darkness reigns at the headquarters of the beast. This is not a worldwide darkness. Only the beast, his throne, and his kingdom are affected. This reminds us of the fifth trumpet back in Revel Trumpet Judgment, Revelation 9-2, and the ninth plague in Exodus 10:21 through 23. When God sent the ninth plague to Egypt, the entire land was dark except Goshen, where the Israelites lived, the judgment of the fifth vial is just the opposite. There is light for the world, but darkness reigns at the headquarters of the beast, which is the Antichrist. And so that's the first five vile judgments that are being poured out uh, upon the inhabitants of the earth who have rejected Christ. And then number six, the sixth angel, it pours out his um, vial upon the earth, starts in verse number 12 and goes through verse number 16. And this is the Euphrates River dries up. And it dries up the Euphrates River. It says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, uh, that the way of the kings uh, of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast. Remember that the, when you, right before, during that uh, time between the first, second tribulation period, that the dragon, Satan, actually entered into the Antichrist, and, um, and because he had had a mortal wound, and it was as if he rose from the dead, but it was actually uh, the Satan taking over that body and embodies himself in the Antichrist, and that's why when you see the second half of the tribulation period, this Antichrist has completely uh, changed his nature. He's turned on the nation of Israel. He had had a, a peace treaty with them, and he had let them offer sacrifices in the temple, and he came in and run them out of the temple and set up the image and gave life to the image and the image could speak to people and all of that. And uh, yet here we see at this, uh, when the, this river drying up and there's something else involved here with these armies that are going to come in from the east and as a way of preparing them. And then he saw the unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet for they are the spirits of devils working miracles. And that's the thing people need to remember, even in this thing of what it means to be saved and trusting Christ as your, as your Savior. Because, see, you go to heaven by faith. You go to heaven by hearing and believing. But even people that are looking for a spiritual experience, a, an awakening, they're looking for an epiphany, and many times they're looking for a feeling of some kind, some great, unbelievable, 
you know, I, I wake up and there's a 10 foot Jesus at the foot of my bed telling me I'm okay. Well, you don't see that in the word of God, but that's the kind of stuff people are looking for. And yet going to heaven is a matter of just hearing what Jesus has done for us. And it's the Holy Spirit of God that works in the heart and convinces us of our need for salvation. But the devil, what he does is he slips counterfeits to people. Churches are full of people that hope they're going to heaven. They think they're going to heaven, but they're not relying on Jesus. They're not trusting. They don't understand. They don't know what the word of God says. And you can't go to heaven unless you know what God's word says as it relates to the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ for our sin on the cross. They buried him with our sin, and he came up three days and three nights without our sin. And so this is significant. And, um, and so out of the mouth uh, of, the, of the beast and the false prophet, the spirits uh, come out of the, um, of the devils. There's, these frogs are spirits of the devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called, in Hebrew, tongue, Armageddon. Now, a lot of people talk about the battle of Armageddon, and that's coming. And this is the first mention of that battle that's going to take place. Um, but that battle is coming. And... Uh, and it'll be introduced to us and explained further down the road. But in this battle of Armageddon, gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. This famous river was mentioned earlier in Revelation when the sixth trumpet sounded and the angels were loosed who were bound therein. At that time, an army of demonic horsemen was also released now an army from the nations of the world gathers for the great battle at Armageddon. People often speak of this battle, but nowhere does the Bible use the phrase, the name Armageddon comes from two Hebrew words, Megiddo, the hill of Megiddo. Megiddo means place of troops or place of slaughter. It's also called the plain of Estralon and the valley of Jezreel. The area is about 14 miles wide and 20 miles long and forms what Napoleon called the most natural battlefield of the whole earth. And that's where everything's going to climax. That's where Jesus is coming back. That's where he is going to defeat all of his foes and set up his kingdom upon the earth. The Gentile nations will look on Armageddon as a battle but to God, it will only be a supper. It will be a supper for the fowls of the air. Revelation 19, 17, 21 says the fowls of the air are actually going to eat the flesh of kings and noble people. The outcome of this battle is recorded in Revelation 19. The Lord returns and defeats his enemy. And then the last one, and we've got to hurry to finish in time. It's Revelation chapter 16, 17 through 21. And all this one says is, it is done. We've poured them out, and it's finished, as far as these vials go. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, it is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as has not since men were upon the earth, of the greatest it's ever been. So mighty an earthquake, and so great, and the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon came into remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath and every island fled away and the mountains were not found and there fell upon man a great hell out of heaven every stone about the weight of a talent and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hell for the plague thereof was exceeding great. The devil is called the prince of the power of the air, so perhaps this seventh vial 
has a special effect on his dominion, but the immediate result is a devastating earthquake that affects the cities of the nations. Satan's entire system is now about to be judged by God. His religious system, the harlot, his political system and economic system, Babylon, and his military system are going to be destroyed by God. And so again, we have the account in the Word of God. If you want to know what's going to happen, I was in prison this last week, and one of the men that I talked to and walked up, we were talking, he said, I just want to ask you something. He says, are we living in the, in, in the end times? Is the world coming to an end? And all I could tell him is that we're getting there. Uh, we're, no, we're not there. If you think this is bad, you wait till that comes. But you can escape it if you know Christ as your Savior. And so, dear friend, if you've never trusted him, you need to trust him today. God loves you. I love you. Just trying to help. Just trying to be a blessing. And I hope you'll consider what God has to say in these verses. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. And be with us again as I share the next lesson. And um, there's a lot yet to come. Thank you so much for being with us today.